Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together. Alright, so today we're looking at Boyle's Law and let's start. We've already covered Charles's Law, okay, and uh, we've already spoken about ideal guesses. Now let's have a look quickly at, you know, some of the fundamentals that uh, are actually covered in Boyle's Law, right? So Boyle's Law simply states that the pressure of any mass of gas is inversely proportional to its volume, provided that temperature remains constant, right? So at any constant temperature, it means that pressure and volume are inversely proportional to each other. Now, what does that mean? It means that if we were to take, right, uh, the pressure in this case, we can say, well, it means that if I were to rearrange this, the product of pressure and volume is actually a constant, okay? The product of the pressure of a gas and its volume will always give you a constant amount. Now, let's see what that simply means, right? Now, think about it. If we were to actually enclose a gas, all right, a mass of gas in a container, all right, and we make sure that all the particles are inside that gas. Remember that a gas will always try to fill out, you know, uh, the contents of the container, right? It would try to fill out the volume of the container that is given in it, okay? Right, now, let's just say for argument's sake that we can actually push, uh, you know, this lid inside, right? So, what would happen if we can push it in, and have a smaller space on the inside. Okay, so there's our plunger. And in this case, what happens? Of course, it means that the particles would now be closer together and they would exert much more force. Remember what pressure is. Uh, pressure is simply force per unit area, right? So it means that the particles will actually push even harder against the lid, right? and in this case push harder against one another right so it means that the bigger the volume right so in this case you've got a larger space the volume is bigger right there is less pressure right so there would be less pressure here okay and in this case it means that there's more volume right so that's why we said um, when you take the pressure and the volume, they are inversely proportional to each other. As you increase volume, the pressure decreases. But obviously, as you increase the volume, uh, rather as you decrease the volume, like in this case, right? Let's talk about case A and case B. In case B, there is less space. So in this case, there is less volume. And as a result, it means that the particles will push even harder uh, against each other and against the lid and even the sides of the container, the walls of the container, right? So in this case, what it simply means is that more pressure, right, means that uh, obviously the gas will occupy less volume, all right? So if we put that math mathematically, it means that the product of pressure and volume will always give us a constant. Now, what does that mean? It means if I were to take in the case of pressure uh, um, of case A, the product of pressure in case A multiplied by the volume of case A would give me a constant. But what does that mean? It means that even if I were to take the product of the pressure in case B multiplied by its volume, it would still give me the same constant. And that is why we can now conclude that PA VA is equal to PB multiplied by VB, right? So this is the formula that we're going to use in terms of Boyle's Law. Now, let me uh, actually show you what that looks like in terms of a graph, okay? Right, so remember, we did say that when you talk about ideal gases, of course, we are assuming here that we are dealing with ideal gases, Right, so if I were to draw a graph of pressure against volume, right, what type of graph would that be? Now, if you think of maths, right, that would be a hyperbola, right? Because what that simply means is that as I increase the, the volume, right, the pressure 
would actually decrease okay so that is the type of graph that we should expect okay right sorry about that so this is the graph that we'll get when we draw pressure against volume but i want to also give a warning right that sometimes you know examiners like playing tricks on us so they would give you a graph of pressure against one over volume remember that pressure is inversely proportional to volume but if you were to look at this and say well but what is pressure against one over volume they actually are directly proportional so you can actually put it this way pressure is directly proportional to the inverse of the volume okay so if we draw the graph of pressure against one over, or over volume so this now becomes a straight line graph okay so this would actually make a straight line graph all right now let's get into some questions and look at how we are going to apply this practically all right so just a couple of things to remember before we care take some calculations all right so usually when we talk about pressure right we're going to always uh, well, not always, but uh, usually in the CAPS curriculum, for those of you that are in South Africa, right, we always measure, uh, you know, pressure in kilopascals. Well, sometimes we do use pascals, right? Uh, and, you, you know, so when we use kilopascals, remember that kilopascals just simply is a thousand pascals, okay? Right? And I'm going to actually tell you about some more units that we use uh, for uh, you know to calculate pressure right and um, when it comes to volume so there this is where sometimes uh, we can find quite a bit of variation so we use cubic centimeters uh, in fact the actual standard is to use cubic decimeters right now cubic decimeters are an equivalent of a liter okay so this is one liter okay but we can also uh, use cubic centimeters. Now, cubic centimeters, right, I want you to always remember this, right? So this is what we would refer as a milliliter of gas, okay? So that means that if I am given cubic centimeters and I need to convert to cubic decimeters, all I need to do is divide by 1,000, right? So for instance, if I've got uh, 30, cubic centimeters of gas right that is an equivalent of 30 divided by 1000 okay and in this case remember this will give me 0 0.03 cubic decimeters right so when you uh, divide there so this is the same as 3 divided by 100 which is 0 0.03 uh, cubic decimeters so remember when you've got cubic centimeters you can convert uh, to cubic decimeters by simply dividing by a thousand of course the opposite is true however let me also state this that it is quite important uh, for you to just keep in mind when we use the formula p1 v1 and it doesn't matter whether you say p a v a or p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 right uh, in this case once you use this formula it really doesn't matter uh, you know the units that you would use your 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 pressure and volume in just as long as what you need to always be mindful of is that pressure and volume on the one instance must be in the same units as the pressure and volume in the other instance so if they give you pressure here in kilopascals you must also make sure that pressure there is also in kilopascals if they give you volume in cubic centimeters here we must also make sure that volume is in cubic centimeters there now some other things just to uh, also keep in mind okay we've spoken about kilopascals sometimes we use the word one atmosphere right now what one, one atmosphere of pressure is approximately 101.3 kilopascals however we usually round this off to a hundred kilopascals okay so just keep please keep in mind that when we talk about one atmosphere of pressure it would be a hundred kilopascals of course if i were to say four atmospheres then all it simply means 
is that uh, the number of, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, all I need to do is multiply that by four, and that would be four times 100 kilopascals, and that would be 400 kilopascals. Okay, right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. And there is a, a term STP that we use. And please remember what STP means. It's uh, we, we say this is standard temperature. So this is standard temperature. Okay. So standard temperature and pressure. Okay, right. Now, what are the conditions okay, that go along with STP. What is standard temperature and pressure? So we usually say, well, for standard temperature, okay, so uh, we've got room temperature and we've got standard temperature, okay. So for standard temperature, we usually use zero degrees Celsius, otherwise uh, 273 Kelvin. Remember that between the two, Okay, we always use Kelvin temperature. So if you've got uh, if you've got degrees Celsius, you need to convert that to Kelvin by simply adding two hundred and seventy three, right? And standard pressure is simply one atmosphere. Okay, so standard pressure is one atmosphere, and in this case, that is pressure at sea level. By the way, right? So this would be pressure at sea level, and pressure at sea level is actually referred to as one atmosphere, which is 100 kilopascals. Well, if we were to be accurate, it's 101.3 kilopascals, but we can simply round it off to 100 kilopascals. Okay, right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right. Um, now, I want us to jump into some examples, but perhaps the last thing that I need to say is, you know, usually, when we talk about one mole of any gas at STP, so any gas at STP occupies a volume of 22.4 cubic decimeters. So the moment that they t tell us about STP, then immediately we know that the gas, any one mole of gas uh, at STP occupies 22.4 moles. Uh, uh, 2.4 cubic decimeters, right? So then the formula that we use is number of moles, in this case would be the volume that the gas occupies divided by the molar volume. And so the molar volume uh, at STP would therefore be 22.4 cubic decimeters, all right? So if we are given number of moles, we can get the volume of a gas, or if we're given the volume, we can get the number of moles if we know that we're dealing with a gas at STP. Right, so let's get right into it, into some questions. Let's have a look at them. All right, so let's have a look at our first example. Right, I've taken this from the internet somewhere. All right, so um, let's have a look at it. So they say a balloon was inflated to a volume of five liters. Right, remember for those of you that are in South Africa, till uh, they tell you that uh, five liters is an equivalent of five cubic decimeters, right? They say at a pressure of 0 0.9 atmospheres, right? So if you wanted to convert that to cubic decimeters, right? So you'd multiply uh, that by, uh, you know, one, uh, 100 uh, kilopascals, right? So if you wanted to convert that into, pas into kilopascals, right? So uh, they say it rises at an altitude, to an altitude rather, where its volume becomes 25 liters, right? So what happens? The volume increases. Now, what do we know from uh, Boyle's law, right? We know that if the pressure increases, right? Rather, if uh, the volume increases, then it means that the pressure in this case would decrease, right? So they're asking us the question, uh, will uh, the pressure around the balloon increase or decrease? And then they want to know what is the new pressure. All right, so let's start. So in this case, it means that pressure one, okay, so we've got pressure one um, to be 0 0.9 atmospheres, okay? So I'm gonna leave it as ATM, right? So uh, volume one, uh, would be 5 liters, or I can simply write it as 5 cubic decimeters, right? Now, pressure 2 
is what we're trying to find. Okay, I'm going to answer the question just now, the first question they asked us. Okay, and our volume in this case suddenly became 25 cubic decimeters. So it means now um, the gas has expanded, right? So it means that the gas now, um, uh, or rather it occupies a bigger volume. Now remember, we said pressure is inversely proportional to the volume or the volume of a gas inversely proportional to the pressure. So what happens? It means that as the volume increased, right? What would happen to the pressure? Definitely the pressure would definitely decrease, right? So our expectation is that the pressure number two should be actually smaller than pressure number one, okay? Right, so now let's do the calculation. Um, I hope that makes sense, all right? And if you want us to convert it back to, uh, you know, kilopascals, we will do that, okay? Just stay with me. Right, so we're going to say uh, Boyle's Law, the formula P1 V1, is equal to P2 V2. So what we can do is we can actually uh, start by substituting, right? Now, remember what I said to you. I said, whatever the, um, you know, the units that we use, we just need to make sure that it's consistent. We don't need to convert at first, right? We can convert, uh, that is if they told us to give the answer in a different unit, right? So we're going to say 0 0.9 multiplied in this case by five, right? That's volume one. And this is equal to P2, which is what we want, multiplied by 25. Okay. So uh, what are we going to do? So we want P2. In this case, what we're simply going to do is divide both sides by 25, right? What I do on the right, I do on the left. Remember, I'm trying to remain with P2 only on the side and so when we take our calculator uh, in this case, all right, uh, let's take, uh, let's pull out our calculator, right? Okay, there we go. Let's put it onto this side. Okay, so we've got, all right, I'm just trying to make it smaller. Okay, so we've got uh, 0 0.9 multiplied by 5, okay? and uh, divide all of that by 25 and it means that pressure number two is equal to 0 0.18 right so um, here we are it means that pressure two would actually be 0 0.18 now remember pressure one was given in atmospheres so pressure two should actually be in atmospheres now if we needed to write that in um, uh, kilopascals, so pressure 2 would be 0 0.18. Remember, what's an atmosphere, right? That's uh, 100 kilopascals. Or if you want to be uh, accurate, you can say 101.3 kilopascals, depending on what you are uh, required uh, in terms of your exam standard, right? So I'm going to say one, oh, 100 kilopascals right and if we multiply those two okay 0 0.18 multiplied by a hundred so that would give us 18 kilo pascals okay so definitely our pressure has increased right if you want to actually use the reference uh, in terms of atmospheres remember we started at 0 0.9 and now all of a sudden it is at 0 0.18. Of course, we predicted that uh, because we had a volume increase. So it means that pressure should decrease. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Let's take another one and we will give it a close. All right, so let's have a look at this second question. They say, I guess with a volume of four liters, at a pressure of uh, 205 kilopascals is allowed to expand, right, uh, to a volume of 12 liters. What is the pressure in the container if the temperature remains constant? Of course, so now let's look at it again, right? So we've got, uh, in this case, we've got our pressure and we've got our volume. So let's say uh, for pressure one, um, We've got 205 kilopascals, okay? And for volume one, we've got four liters, 
right? I did say to you that liters are an equivalent of cubic decimeters, right? So um, let's say pressure two, that's exactly what we're looking for, isn't it? And what is our second volume? Uh, in this case, we know that it expanded to a volume of 12 liters, right? Okay, so uh, 12 liters, remember, is the same as 12 cubic decimeters. So now we need to calculate the pressure number two. So all we're simply going to do is use Boyle's law, P1V1 is equal to P2V2. So pressure one, that's 205. Okay, I'm not going to uh, use kilopascals or thousand. Uh, I'm not going to use it in pascals. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as kilopascals. So that's multiplied by four, which is equal to pressure number two, right? Uh, multiplied by 12, okay? Right, now for those of you who would prefer, okay, let me just go back a little bit. Who prefer to, uh, you know, just isolate or make the subject of the formula first, because we're looking for P2, what you can do is divide by V2, of course, um, depending on which curriculum you're using, right? In some cases, they ask you to find the uh, subject of the formula. So uh, P1 V1 um, divided by uh, V2, rather. Okay, why? Because we divided both sides by V2, but what I do on the right, I do on the left, and this is what you would have, right? Now, for those of you who are using caps, of course, you can now substitute, you know, and find your answer. Not that there's anything different, uh, but in some curriculars, what they tend to uh, prefer is for you to substitute first, right? So before you find the subject of the formula, so I'm going to do that, okay? So this is going to be 205 multiplied by 4, and this is going to be pressure 2, that's the one we want, multiplied by 12. And of course, because we want pressure 2, we're going to get rid of that 12 by dividing by 12 on both sides, right? So it means that pressure 2, if we just whip out our calculator quickly, so that would be 205 times 4, okay, uh, divide by 12, okay? And so that means that our pressure would be 68.33, and remember, because pressure 1 was in kilopascals, I am going to actually express this pressure in kilopascals as well. Note, the volume increased, and so the pressure uh, definitely must decrease from what it was before. All right. Now, ladies and gents, I'm going to keep it here. Of course, we're going to consolidate all of these sections, uh, you know, Charles's law, uh, Boyle's law, Guy Luke's, uh, Lusek's law, and we're going to put all of these together. Uh, but for now, please keep tuned uh, to your favorite uncle's channel. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.